uh, but it is good to be with you live this evening. And, you know, while we were worshiping, uh, the word scattered came to my mind. And, um, you know, because welcome you, welcoming you tonight in the way that we are is different than normal because we're a scattered people right now. Uh, but, you know, as you look at the New Testament, every time God scatters his people, it's for a purpose, it's for a reason. And, and uh, in fact, some of the greatest revivals in scripture happened when God's people were scattered. So um, it's not conventional for sure. It's a little different than what we're used to. Sunday night here, we have uh, our little, uh, you know, living room. I guess it's our living room, right? It's our little family room, something like that. You got yours and, and um, we're going to harness technology and uh, gather together and talk about the scriptures and uh, make sure that we have the right framework for what we're dealing with in our lives. I am thankful. I just want to say this for our production team. You know, they work so hard behind the scenes, and, and um, so we give claps to them tonight. want to just encourage you guys to be praying for them because uh, they are pouring their hearts out. And, and I know that so many of you have been, been blessed. Um, Sunday morning was a little different than normal, and, and um, you know, so I give people a hard time when they stay home. Remember? Like, do you guys remember this? So, so sometimes, sometimes, you know, when we have everything available to us and we can come to church and worship and um, for, for, from time to time, people will say, hey, you know, I watched online today, just stayed at home in my jammies and ate wa waffles and, and um, so I had a waffle today while I was, while I was, <laughs> while I was watching the 11 o'clock service and um, I felt really, really guilty. I don't know. Yeah, I just did. But uh, we're blessed to be with you tonight. You know, on Sunday nights, on Sunday nights, we do something called Dig Deeper, and we're going through the, the scriptures verse by verse. We've been going through the uh, epistles of the Apostle Paul, and, um, you know, an in-depth study, really word for word in a way. Uh, and tonight, we, you know, we're going to handle it a little bit differently. We're going to have a conversation about the end of chapter 3, uh, beginning in verse 18, um, all the way to chapter 4, beginning or, or ending there in verse 6. And there really are... There are two topics that um, the Apostle Paul is dealing with that we're going we're gonna to have a conversation about together. Um, by the way, I just want to remind you that we do have a lot online for you to engage in. There's uh, daily devotions, and our, our, fa our, our pastors are following up on Facebook Live sometime during the day afterwards to answer questions for you and to pray for you. So um, just want to really encourage you to download our app and stay connected with what we're doing online. Uh, but the Apostle Paul, you know, he deals with two different topics that we're going to discuss this evening. And the first one, so totally appropriate. Like, I did not plan this. You know, it's just the way the Word of God works. You know, God knew. God knew we would need yes, to did. talk about these two things tonight. And the first, the first thing is relationships. Um, you know, we're in this spot where, uh, you know, we are spending more time with um, our families than we probably have in a long time. And for some of us, you know, we've been very distracted and very busy with, with many different things. And so um, while things have been shut down, we find ourselves, uh, most of us, not all of us for sure, but, but most of us find ourselves with our families. And, and, you know, I mean this in the best way. That's not always easy. It's not always easy. We're not, we're not always used to it. And um, I saw this video uh, Someone sent me this video. It's just so funny. You probably have seen this. There's a lot of funny stuff circulating right now. And um, I had to show this video to you tonight because I, I think you'll get a kick out of it. Because of coronavirus, you are going to be quarantined, but you have a choice. Do you A, quarantine with your wife and child, or B? B. <laughs> B. Okay, hey, I have heard that. I've watched it, like, I don't know, 15 times. We've, we've watched it a lot together, and every time it's hilarious. I'm, I'm not advocating the answer, but, um, but you know, sometimes, sometimes we feel that way. Sometimes it's not easy, um, our relationships. And so, you know, tonight I just wanted to start with um, maybe, first of all, gratitude. You know, Thanksgiving. Yes. That... Um, you know, there are a lot of great things happening now that we have the opportunity to be with family and how thankful we should, we should be uh, about that. What do you guys think about just gratitude for our relationships? Maybe family, maybe friends, social distancing is kind of created, absence makes the heart grow fonder. What do you guys think about that gratitude for relationships? I would say, I think I've seen even more connection now. You know, I've 
talk to people when I'm home alone and they're home alone or they're, they have to still be at work and that has helped build, you know, even a stronger relationship knowing that we can't see each other in person. And I think a lot of us are blessed to still be at home with families and have a spouse and then there are people that don't have that. And I think that's when we can be really grateful for technology that we can contact them and encourage them and be there for them like we can't be before we had to be quarantined. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I, I, I look forward to every day get, getting to spend some extra time with my family, with my daughter, my, my new daughter and my wife, and, and uh, getting to just spend some extra time of just uh, um, being together with them, putting together, I did this morning, put together uh, a new toy for, for Ella, you know, and things like that. Where, what was the toy? Um, it's like this little play mat, this little like jungle play mat thing that she gets a look and she's like overly stimulated by all the colors <laughs> and so sounds cool. and sights and stuff. She loved it. Um, but you know, it just a, a blessing to be able to just uh, um, uh, to be present with my family a little bit more often than I, than I get to, you know, and it's a, it's a huge blessing. That's great. What about you guys? <laughs> uh, well, you know, I find myself, you know, taking care of the kids, spending, you know, hanging out with them. They're a little older now, like, you know, when they were younger, you know, tea time was cool, <laughs> and then now, but you I did, don't. You do tea time? I did. I did Come on, the, man. I got girls, man. I, I heard this. <laughs> I, I heard Kenny, Kenny does tea time. Wait, with the girls, yes. I'm proud to say I'm a tea time kind of dad, <laughs> but also not like, neglecting the wife. You know, uh, I, I noticed a lot of um, husbands walking with their wives, you know, earlier today, and, you know, I, I find myself, you know, uh, Siggy taught me something a couple of uh, weeks ago. He said he wakes up every morning to, uh, to do the dishes and clean the house up. So when his wife comes downstairs, it just blesses her. He loves that feeling. Dude, are, are you seriously dropping that conviction <laughs> bomb right now? Like, wow, thanks, Kenny. If my <laughs> wife is watching thanks, this, Kenny. I'm going to get home. She's going to be like, hey, be like Siggy. <laughs> I hate to say it, but yeah, he did teach me that. Let me be honest. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm with Kenny. I, I have two daughters, and my youngest, she's now 21. She's blessed. I'm ble we're blessed to have her at home. But, you know, I played babies with her, and we did school together and all that kind of stuff. And so it was, it was great growing up. And, uh, but now that she's home and, uh, from college and spending time with us, uh, it was so great today. Um, I walked out into the garage, and my wife and Sophie had moved out of car. And they're in the garage, and they're doing a workout together. Like, Sophie's totally training my wife. What a blessing, you know. Yeah to spend time like that. And then this morning we got to spend time together just, you know, watching churches online and, and going out and taking walks. So, I mean, this time we really can capitalize on being together as a family and reconnecting. It's a blessing. It really is. Yeah, that's really good. You know, if you uh, have your Bibles tonight, Colossians chapter 3, verse 18, you know, Paul, he works through different relationships. And so he, and I'm not going to read the verses tonight, but but um, let me give you a synopsis. He says, wives, submit to your own husbands. Uh, always, I, I, I don't know, for me, it's like it's, he intentionally says your own husbands, not like other people's husbands, because sometimes that might be easier. No, your own husbands. Husbands, love your wives. Um, children, obey your parents in all things. Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. Uh, and then Paul, you know, in modern day vernacular, um, also talks about employees and how they should work you know, not as unto man, but as unto the Lord. And then he talks about employers, really, this is the modern day um, way of saying it, uh, that employers should treat their employees fairly, knowing that there's a, a God in heaven who's watching over all of that. And, you know, I think, you know, I think it's, it's easy sometimes for people to think, you know, pastors and people in, in ministry, you know, relationships are easy for them. You know, they don't ever have difficulties. Um, surely... Pastor Derek is the one that's up in the morning doing dishes. Now, the thing for me is Rachel is the cleanest person on the face of the earth. There, there are never, there just are never dishes. God. But yeah. um, I've got other things that I for sure need to be doing. But, you know, sometimes you can think this, that, uh, that people in ministry have relationships all dialed in and it's easy. But that's not true. That's not true. I mean, it's, uh, we, I read this list and, and there's some, there's some real challenges yeah. there. And I think... You know, the flip side, and it's not really a flip side necessarily, but for sure we're thankful and, um, you know, we're, we're grateful for the opportunity we have. But how can we, there's a lot we all have to work on in relationships. Mm -hmm. yeah. And rela good relationships take a lot of work. So how can we leverage this time, right, that we have? We don't know how long it's going to be, maybe a month or whatever. How can we leverage this time so we're growing relationally uh, in our families 
with our friends, and then establishing, you know, behaviors that last. Um, well, I think it's so important, first off, you know, um, that we take a look at our, um, our, daily, our daily disciplines. And um, for a father or a parent in the home, you know, it's so important that we, we have those good spiritual disciplines. And now that there's maybe things that would distract us from that, this is a great time to really reevaluate what you get to do with your family, how you can build uh, relationships, how you can spend time teaching your children at home how to pray, how to get into God's word, you know, do a Bible study with them. Let, let them, you know, uh, talk to you and, and hear what they're saying. Find out what's going on in their lives. You know, just through conversation, it's so important that we listen to our kids. Yep. And not with the mindset of, of having to fix them when they're talking, but just listen. Just listen, uh, let God's word do the speaking, coming alongside of them and encouraging them. And, and so just reevaluating, do you have good spiritual disciplines at home? Are you leading your family well? And I think it's a good time to really, really, you know, do a checkup from the neck up kind of thing. Most definitely. Um, I agree with you 100%. I think also it's important that we are, as men in the household, we have to walk that walk. Our kids need to see us praying. Um, it's easy to say, hey, Go ahead and pray about it, but it's more important that they see us praying about it and being about it. I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing when your, your, your daughter's correcting you when you're... Uh, uh, <laughs> driving? <laughs> impatient while you're driving? Let me just fill the blank in. You, you no, no, it's, no. It's not my I mean, like, I mean, like with, with Scripture, telling you, oh, no, not, not, that, that, not that verse, Dad. It's, it's this, oh, yeah. this verse. You know I mean? That's, that's awesome. Yeah. And uh, when, they're, when they're saying, I know, Dad, you know... Uh, and I know what you mean, Dad. I understand what you're saying. And that, that's from walking that walk. Yeah. You know, that's a reflection of Christ, that we need to be walking that walk and uh, showing them that. Let me, let me ask a, like a, kind of a real example, you know, a real situation. I was, reading, I was reading this to Levi the other night and kind of preparing for our time together. And when I got to verse 21 where it says, Fathers, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. Um, he was right next to me. And we're, we're a snuggly family, so, you know, Levi's snuggling in. And I, I said, what do you think? You know, what do you think that that means? And he said, Dad, I think it means that, um, you know, what, what kids want, especially from their dad, is approval. Mm. And so, you know, when dads become um, unnecessarily uh, impatient or frustrated or explosive, it can really bear down hard upon a kid and, and hit them where, it matters most, you know, because really what, what they want is their dad's approval. So, so you know, I'm not the most patient person on the face of the planet. And, um, and say maybe, for instance, you know, you got a, thanks, I appreciate that. You got, a, uh, you got somebody watching right now, and, you know, he's not used to being at home. He's used to being at work. He's used to doing, you know, a lot of activity. And now he's at home, and he's like, you know, there's so much going on so much relationally that he's not used to, there could be the tendency to become impatient and frustrated and maybe, you know, explosive might be too strong, but, but say things that um, would end up hurting, you know, a child because now you got families that are confined, you know, they're kind of self-quarantined. I'm not sure we're using that word like, like, you know, necessarily at this point, but they are kind of self-quarantined. How would you guide a dad through that situation? How, how could he, you know, handle it in a way that would honor God and, and not begin to say things to his child that might be discouraging to them? One of the things that creates such frustration uh, in a family is when you have these, these preconceived expectations that you just expect your kids or your wife or to, to, to behave in. And you have to remember that, especially in your kids, they're learning, they're growing, and they're watching you. And so you have to be very careful with placing an expectation on your, your child that you're not willing to check yourself in and walk through and learn from, you know? Because when you have un, unmet expectations or, or you know, you, frustration can build up. And if you don't identify that, then frustration can turn to anger, and that's where anger turns into wrath. Mm -hmm. And so it's so important that first dads, you know, like you said, pray and, and just seek the Lord and and. and don't try to change your children, lead your children. Amen. 
let the Holy Spirit do that work. You know, that's something I had to learn at a young age. You know, I expected my daughter just to get it, to be a certain thing. And, you know, God's tapping me on the shoulder in my conscience. And he's saying, hey, do you have this down? Are you perfect? And so I had to remove my yoke of perfection off my family and lead them instead of expect them. The other thing for me is uh, the word sorry is so prevalent right now in the house (laughs) because we're all so close to each other. Um, And I I purposely, whenever I raise my voice, I make sure in the same manner I raise my voice, I apologize so clearly to make sure my girls hear it. You know, I want my girls to know I love their mom. I want them to know that... um, that I'm very sorry if I, you know, because, you, know, you know, I don't want them to think that, okay, that this is how it should be. You know, love should be filled up the, every single space in my house. Um, it's so important. If Christ is there, love is there. You know what I mean? That's good. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think like this uh, time is one of the things that we all are realizing is that um, even in this time, we're all really vulnerable, right? And we can all be vulnerable vulnerable as a family, right? And be able to share as a family, share like, I, I know we were we were talking about this yesterday of like being able to share your fears and your anxieties and your doubts or your, um, you know, thoughts and, and likes and dislikes and being able to um, to sit down as a family as well and, and, uh, um, and as a dad to be able to just uh, press in a little bit more with your with your kids, um, with your wife, and and uh, and just to kind of you know learn more about them, you know. And and uh, I love uh, I, I can't remember. You can remind me first or second Peter where it says to dwell with your wife with understanding, and uh, and I've in First Peter. And uh, um, I love that verse because um, it just kind of gives you this um, this action, this call to action as a husband to never stop learning about your wife. Yes. And uh, and sometimes in the busyness of things, you stop learning and you stop. Uh, you forget like what what her likes and dislikes are and same with your kids you can forget what their likes and dislikes are and you have now uh, so much more time to just sit down and just talk turn off the tv turn off the the music turn off all of the noise and just sit down and get to know each other again and and get to um, uh, and just learn about your kids learn about your wife and see what they like what they dislike what they're doing on social media what uh, you know who they're following all those kind of things and just get to know each other again yeah. <laughs> yeah, as a mom. Okay. <laughs> um, no, I would just say, like, this is a great time to kind of be echoing what everybody else is saying is to get to know your family better. Mm. You know, I think we, in the rush of life, you know, it's so easy to just have small talk conversations in the car when you're going to a practice or, you know, whatever. And now it's you can actually intentionally sit down at the dinner table or even make Um, Me and Sean the other night had a date night at home. You know, it's like just because we can't go out doesn't mean we're not going to have intentional conversation. And we still need to shut the phone off. We still need to, you know, have personal time with one another. And I think if you do have kids, like this is a great time to take advantage of that. And, you know, we're all going through this together. It's not just, you know, the adult that's having to carry it through. But, you know, I think the kids need even more encouragement and explanation than we do because they don't understand as much. Yeah, no, I appreciate you saying that because it's true. They don't, they don't understand. And so my daughter, Hannah, she works at Dutch Bros. And, you know, she's seeing all of this from a really interesting perspective. And I think she for sure gets it. Levi does not necessarily. And so I think it's important for us really to be walking our kids through this and explaining to them, you know, what is going on and then what the Word of God says about it and, um, you know, how God wants us to, to respond. You know, what... What does God want us to do? Who does God want us to be? I mean, it's a great teaching moment, I think, you know, for, for us as parents, you know, to really help our kids understand, um, you know, who God desires us to be in the situation. And, you know, we have extended family. Alec got married. His wife's mom and dad and family live in Milan. And so, you know, he, um, her dad, um, what's happened to me today? And it's rough. It's rough there. And, you know, they ask for prayer. It's a national day of prayer in Italy right now. So I would encourage you, please, if you're um, watching this, to, uh, to pray for that country. And, and you know, there's a, a lot of people that have lost their lives around them, and, and brothers, brothers and sisters in the Lord, and uh, they're with the Lord now. Um, but, you know, to be able to take that story and reality that really does hit close to home for us as a family and to talk our kids through it, and, you know, the issue of everlasting life, and for the believer in Christ, what does happen after this life? You know, we have the confidence of heaven 
Um, and it's, it's just so good. Um, before we move on from relationships, creative ways, creative things. You know, you're at home, and you know, if this does last for a few more weeks or, or whatever, um, we're going to need some really creative things to do uh, so we don't kill each other. Um, we played Uno today, which, which might, might not be good because I'm a really competitive person. And so, you know, Hannah did most of the winning. Super competitive. Yeah, I am. I got issues. You can pray for me. <laughs> Um, but, but, you know, so I'm going to go home. I'm going to go for a walk with Levi tonight. Give me some creative things. Give us some creative things that uh, you can do, uh, whether it's family, friends, however it might work. Go to the movies. I would say that. I saw this picture, and this family was sitting around the TV, popcorn, just watching a movie, and it's like, that's, you know, let's go to the movies. Yeah. I think that's kind of cool. That's great. Um, Depending on the age of your children, you know, like my daughter was out training my wife in the gym today, but if you've got little kids, you know, uh, be creative with them. Think of ways that you can reenact stories, stories from the Bible. You know, as uh, when Sophie was little, we would build forts, we would create different atmospheres or, or things in the house uh, to, to just hang out and, and exercise their imaginations, you know, and as a family, it's, it's great to do that in, in the in, inside the house, but also, you know, like um, uh, Miriam was saying, get out into nature. You can still go out. Go out hiking. Go out walking. You know, uh, go out in God's beautiful creation and, and praise Him for it. You know, that'll help kids to take their minds off of being confined and being out looking at really God's creation and say, hey, we're okay. This thing may be going on, but we're, we're okay. God's still in control. Long walks to the daughters, man. It's amazing what they say to you. Woo! They talk to you about what's going on in their lives. Um, help them remodel the rooms. I mean, so good. Clean it up. Uh, that's quality time, bro. That's quality time. I would say too, real quick. Um, if you're if you're single and you don't have a family and you don't uh, you, you you're not um, you know married or have kids or anything like that, like the lie right now is that you're alone. Or and I just want to tell somebody someone who's listening that feels alone right now that loneliness is a lie. Um, that's what the body of Christ is for. That's what these relationships that we built outside of our own homes and outside of social media in the walls of the uh, of the church building and things like that. There's there's those relationships. Relationship. So press in even more right now to your family, uh, it, what, even if it's through FaceTime or through a phone call or text messaging or something like that, or through um, as we connect online uh, together and stuff uh, uh, through Facebook and Instagram and things like that through our church app. And, and uh, really encourage you guys to press in even more. This is a, a great time to build in our relationships. You're not alone. Loneliness is alive. The enemy would love to, to, to tell you right now that you're alone and that nobody is thinking of you, and that's a lie. And uh, so I encourage you to, to get plugged in even more. That's great. I was going to ask somebody to speak to someone who was lonely. So that was, that was awesome. Thanks, <laughs> Pastor Derek. thanks for doing that. I didn't even have to really ask. Hey, um, also, also, you know, the second real topic here is that he asks the church at Colossae to pray. And um, it's interesting, I think, what he asks them to pray for. Uh, they were a praying church, obviously, because he says in verse 2, continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant. That word really strikes me, you know, that, man, what's our prayer life like? Is it vigilant? Would we even use the word vigilant to describe how we pray? Um, but the prayer request that he had was so that God could open up a door for the gospel. You know, he says to the church of Colossae, pray for me that God would open, open up a door so I could speak the mystery of Christ, um, that I would be able to speak as I ought to speak. And then he exhorts them, walk in wisdom towards those who are outside redeeming the time. And I think the two are for sure tied together. You know, Paul is asking, hey, um, pray for me that God would open a door and be wise, realizing that we need to buy back this time. We need to use the minutes that God has given to us so that we can bring the gospel to the lost. Yeah. And that's really, you know, we've talked a lot about this, that, that as um, hard as this may be, there's an opportunity here that we don't want to miss. You know, there are windows of willingness. People are open. They're thinking about things they haven't thought about before. Maybe, you know, you're watching online uh, tonight and, you know, you're in your family room, you're watching on television via Apple TV or something like that. And, you know, this is not what you'd normally do. You would not normally do this on a Sunday night. Um, but, but there are things happening within your heart, and you're considering things you've never considered before. And all that's happening for a reason. You know, the, the Holy Spirit is the one that's stirring your heart. 
because God loves you mm -hmm. and God wants a relationship with you. Yeah. How can we, as Christians, you know, and you guys can talk about the church, how are we really using these circumstances as an opportunity for the gospel? Well, one of the ways is, uh, as we were praying through and seeking the Lord, uh, we've uh, put together a, a hands and feet benevolence ministry. And what this really entails is um, gathering together faithful volunteers who would be willing to go out into the community and to minister and serve those people that are maybe high risk, whether they're elderly or they have some type of, uh, um, you know, condition that they shouldn't really be out in the public. So, you know, we put together a, uh, an app, I mean, a form online that you will be able to go on tomorrow, which is Monday. And if you are someone who needs groceries, uh, we'll be picking up prepaid groceries, we'll be picking up prepaid med uh, medications, and we'll be delivering them to your house. So that's one way that we can, you know, reach our community for those people that um, can't, can't take care of themselves. And also, um, our evangelism pastor, Pastor Brandon, uh, will be out um, offering free prayer. We have the drive-through prayer. <laughs> and, and then um, also uh, free Bibles will be given out to people. We'll, tomorrow we'll be at um, Russell and Buffalo uh, between the hours of 11 um, a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, just offering free prayer. They literally, just drive up. We'll pray for you. Whatever it is that's going on in your life right now, and offer you a Bible. I mean, you'd be surprised how many people need Bibles. That's awesome. So, you know, Pastor Tim is watching from, uh, from home tonight, and um, he, said, he said, when you need a break, play hide-and-go-seek. <laughs> 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 he will find you. Tim, thank you so much. You know, what a, what a huge help that was. Yeah, you that know, was you probably seriously impacted someone's life. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, so uh, we just want to encourage you. Like, we're not, we're not, um, we're going to continue to serve people. Mm -hmm. We're going to use this as an opportunity for the gospel. Everyone has to work out for themselves what that means right now because, you know, with social distancing and, and things like that, you know, there are some um, issues of conscience that you have to work through. But, but we would also encourage you, don't be afraid right now. God wants to use you. Maybe, you know, in uh, one of the ministries that we have happening here at the church, you know, while we're out in the community, uh, for sure there are going to be a lot of opportunities. But it's not just confined to that. It may be that God is going to birth an idea in your own heart, you know, not play hide-and-go-seek, but... But, you know, maybe, maybe look, there's a lot for you to leverage just right now, whether it's social media or you don't, have to, you don't have to wait for the church to create something for you to do the ministry, for you to be a voice for the gospel. So can you guys talk to that? Yeah, of course. I think that, um, you know, in, in, we have a really unique time right now where, um, you know, a lot of uh, ministries that the church has done, not just Calvary Chapel, Las Vegas, but churches just around the country and everything. Um, a lot of the, um, if you're sitting in the pew or sitting in the, the, the seat of the, the congregation, sometimes the thought is, well, that's kind of the pastor's job. That's kind of the staff's job. They're the ones that have the resources to do things like that. And in this really unique time, we're all kind of on the same playing field where um, with social distancing, we have like, um, other than a few of these, these amazing options to be able to reach our community. Some of us don't have those, uh, those abilities, you know, and some of us are more high risk and things like that. And, and, uh, though we're social distancing, I, I heard a pastor say today that we're social distancing, but we're not spiritually distancing. And, uh, and we have a really unique opportunity to share a message of hope. And even personally, I, I really, um, I used, uh, my social media platform to, um, just encourage creatives to, um, this weekend to uh, really this whole week to spend the extra time that we have um, at home to create something beautiful and to um, share a different message on social media because the message right now is fear and discord and chaos and all of these kind of things and and uh, and we wanted to just I just wanted to spread a different kind of message and so it was amazing to see yesterday so many people that were just sharing these amazing creative um, these beautiful masterpieces really of 
songs and art pieces and poems and all of these different things, and they used their social media to share that. And it was just uh, beautiful to see uh, a different message, a message of hope that was, um, was on the internet for a time. And, and so really encourage you guys to, to utilize those, those uh, outlets to be able to um, join the church and to reach more of um, our, our communities, but reach more of the, the world really in our country with a different message. And it's a message of hope that, um, you know, the Great Commission uh, is to every Christian. Um, and there's not like a stipulation of, well, unless you're quarantined, then you can pause on the Great Commission. No, we still have this commission to go out and to preach the gospel and make disciples of all nations Amen. and baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And so we still have this call to go out and share the gospel with people. Yeah, and I would just add, um, I've seen a lot of people doing a question box on Instagram. You can probably do it on Facebook, too. Just, you know, prayer requests, question mark, and then people will submit their prayer requests. And when you look at the list, it's amazing to see how much need there is out there and that you can pray for them yourself. Or if you do have kids and they have friends and they do it, you guys can gather together and pray. And I think that's just awesome to, you know, the person on the other end know that knows that they're getting prayed for and that their need is being met some way, somehow. That's great. Any final thoughts before um, I wrap up? Well, I have one. I just want to um, encourage you. The, the most important relationship right now in your life is your relationship with God. And uh, while, while, you know, for sure there are many, many important relationships that he's placed in your life, he, he wants a relationship with you. And maybe you don't have that. Maybe you've never taken a step of faith and trusted in Christ and received him as your savior, you know, and you might be thinking, well, what does that have to do with a relationship with God? And it is, it is everything. That is how you have a relationship with God. And I, I do believe there's a misconception out there, and, and I had this misconception myself. I thought Christianity was a bunch of people who were t- trying to do good things to uh, merit favor in the eyes of God, to establish their own righteousness, and because, you know, they were working hard at being good people, that, you know, that's really what you know, God does, that he evaluates based on our moral efforts or based on our religious um, performance. And, and look, if, if it was all about religious performance, we'd be in trouble, right? Because, and there are people who say, hey, you know, as long as you go to church, as long as you go to church, you're good with God. Well, we got an issue here because you, I mean, I'm not saying the church is a building, the church is people, but we're in a situation where, you know, clearly, clearly it's not coming to a building that saves a person. It's not coming to a building that establishes your righteousness before God. So so it begs the question, what does? How can I be in a place where I am right with God and, and I know that he's my heavenly father and I have the assurance of everlasting life because the reality is, you know, coronavirus may not get us, but something will. Something will, you know, we're all going to stand before God and, and there's no way to escape that. There's no avoiding that. And the option really is, there's, there's two options. You can stand before him as his child or as his enemy. And to stand before him as his child, you have to put your faith in Jesus Christ. This was why the father sent the son. He sent the son who, you know, came in a human body, lived a perfect life, died on the cross for our sins, rose again on the third day. God did all of that through his son so that when you put your faith in Jesus, you're forgiven of your sins. The Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When we look to Jesus Christ and we depend upon his work on the cross, not our works, not our religious works or moral works, but what he did on the cross, when we believe in that personally, not just, not just saying that you know other people might believe in it, so maybe there's some truth to it, but saying for ourselves, Lord, I believe in you. I trust in you. I believe with all my heart that you died for me and that you rose again on the third day. When we make that confession from our hearts, the Bible says we're forgiven, we become children of God, and we have the absolute assurance of everlasting life. If you've never taken that step of faith, we want to give you an opportunity to do that tonight. And look, this is, um, as much as we love you, this really isn't our invitation to you. It's God's invitation to you because he loves you more than we ever could. And, you know, maybe you're that lonely person. Maybe you're that person, that isolated person tonight. And, and, and the way you feel, your feelings are real and, you know, and they hurt. And you have that overwhelming feeling that you're alone. God says to you tonight, trust in my son, believe in him, 
and I will bring my everlasting presence into your life. You will never be alone again. Maybe tonight, you know, you're in that spot where your life has just been a, a total mess and, you know, the brake's been pulled and, and now it's a moment of self-evaluation. And as you look at your own life, you're not happy with what you see. You know, we're talking about relationships and um, making them better during this time. Maybe you've started, you know, absolutely on the wrong foot. Your relationships are a mess and your life is a mess. Maybe you're overwhelmed with addiction. You know, God loves you tonight, and he wants to step into your life, and he wants to bring real change. He wants to supply you with real help. He has the answers for you this evening, and all you have to do is turn to him. And I just want to say to you tonight, the amazing thing about God is I can communicate that message to you this evening in a room that is empty you know, that message that flows through the technology that's been established into your house, onto your phone, and you can actually take a step of faith and look to Jesus Christ and in the place that God has you, he will do the work in your life. He will be the solution, the answer to every need that you have. The Bible says that he is an ever-present help in our time of need, and that's what he wants to be in your life this evening. Tonight, if this is you, Tonight you want to be a Christian. What is a Christian? A Christian is someone who's put their faith in Jesus Christ, repented of their sins, and has chosen to follow Jesus as a disciple. Tonight, if this is the step of faith that you want to make, I want to lead you in a very simple prayer. It's a prayer that begins your relationship with God. It's the first step that you need to take. It's not the last step that you'll take because, you know, relationships are a journey. But this step is the most important step you'll ever take in your life. So tonight, if you're listening and, and, you know, God is moving in your life, he's speaking to you, and you would say, I want to I put my faith in Jesus Christ. I need the help of God. I want to turn my life over to him. I want his eternal presence in my life. I want the gift of everlasting life. Tonight, if this is you, I want you to bow your head and to close your eyes. And I want you to follow me in this very simple prayer. And you know, you don't have to pray this prayer out loud, but I would encourage you to pray it out loud. Maybe tonight you're, you're with your whole family and, and none of you have taken a, a step of faith. None of you have looked to Jesus for salvation. This is a time for your whole family to respond to the gospel. Maybe tonight, husband and wife, you're listening together. God wants to touch you this evening. Maybe tonight you're all alone and, you know, after you pray this prayer, you will not ever be alone again. Maybe this evening you're a Christian and, you know, you've been wayward, you've been prodigal, and you need to come home to your Heavenly Father. This is an opportunity for you to get right with God. So follow me in this prayer tonight. Father, tonight, I want to thank you for loving me. God, you have spoken to me. You have revealed yourself to me. Tonight I'm choosing to turn away from my sin. Tonight I'm choosing Jesus as my Lord and as my Savior. Father, forgive me. Receive me as your child. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And give me the gift of life everlasting. God, help me and strengthen me, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, if you followed in prayer tonight, welcome to the family of God. We're so excited for you and best step uh, you'll ever take in your life. You know, God will not let you down. Now, listen, I want to encourage you. We want to follow up with you. We want to pray for you. Uh, we would love to send you a Bible if you don't have a Bible. And so on our Facebook Live right now, um, our evangelism pastor, Pastor Brandon, is available uh, for you. We would love for you to um, log into Facebook Live and, and share with him what God is doing in your life. Tell him your story. Give him an opportunity to pray for you and um, to be able to send you some resources. Also want to encourage you to check out cclasvegas.org forward slash new 
dash believers, all right? So we would love to get your information and, and just encourage you, um, you know, in this time, like we've talked about, even though there may be some social distancing, there's not spiritual distancing, uh, we want to connect with you. And so we'd encourage you to go to cclasvegas.org forward slash new dash believers. Hey, we're going to close in a song of worship. May God just richly bless you this week. May he strengthen you. May you draw near to God like you've never drawn near before. The promise of scripture is as you draw near to him, he will draw near to you.